Hello everyone. In the previous class, we have seen one-dimensional convolution and what is meant by a topless matrix. How a topless matrix represent one-dimensional LSI system. In today's class, we will see how we can represent a two-dimensional system using a matrix. Now, in the previous class, we have derived the relation between the input and the output for an LSI two-dimensional system. We have seen that the relation between the input and output is y of m comma n is equal to x of m comma n convolved with h of m comma n where h of m comma n is impulse response of the given LSI two-dimensional system. So let us consider x of m comma n is equal to 1, 4, 1, 2, 5, 3 where the zero origin is at 2 and when, we, when I move up, the row index is going to increase. When I move towards the right, the column index is going to increase. So, this is 0, 0. This is 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 2. H of m comma n is equal to 1, 1, 1, minus 1, to 0 at 1. Now, to compute y of m comma n, we need to compute the convolution between x of m comma n and h of m comma n. y of m comma n is equal to summation over m prime equal to minus infinite to infinite, summation over n prime equal to minus infinite to infinite, x of m prime comma n prime multiplied with h of m minus m prime comma n minus n prime. Here we have both x of m comma n and h of m comma n to be finite length signals. So y of m comma n will also have finite length. We can always compute the number of rows and the number of columns in y of m comma n just like what we have done in the one dimensional case. The number of rows in y of m comma n is obtained by number of rows in x of m comma n plus number of rows in h of m comma n minus 1. So the number of rows in x of m comma n is 2. Number of rows in y of x, h of m comma n is 2. So the number of rows in y is equal to plus 2 minus 1 which is equal to 3. Similarly, number of columns in y of m comma n is obtained by number of columns in x of m comma n plus number of columns in h of m comma n minus 1. So, 3 plus 2 minus 1 is 4. y of m comma n will have 3 rows and 4 columns. Now, what is the starting index of the row? And what is the ending index of the row? The starting index of the row is obtained by starting the sum of the starting indices of x of m comma n and h of m comma n. Of course, I am talking about row indices. So, c x is s r x is equal to zero, s r h is equal to zero. So, s r y is equal to zero plus zero, which is again zero. Okay. Similarly, starting index of the column is obtained by the sum of starting column indices of x of m comma n and h of m comma n which is also turned out to be 0. The ending indices are can be you know can be computed similarly by adding the corresponding ending indices. We got the ending row index as a 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 and we got the ending column index as a 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3. So the row 
so y of m comma n start at 0 comma 0 and will end at comma t after deciding the starting and the ending indices we can compute each element by substituting the corresponding values in this expansion summation over m prime equal to minus infinite to infinite summation over n prime equal to minus infinite to infinite x of m prime comma n prime and we are calculating y of 0 comma 0 so m equal to 0 and n equal to 0 i have substituted that here get uh, summation over x of summation over m prime equal to 0 to 1 summation over n prime equal to 0 to 2 x of m prime comma n prime there is a n prime here this is not n multiplied with h of minus m prime comma minus n prime and you can see the lower limit and upper limit of these two indices are replaced with a 0 and 1 here and 0 and 2 here the reason being x of m prime comma n prime is a non zero value only between these indices beyond these indices x of m prime comma n prime is equal to 0 hence uh, we have got a uh, place of minus infinite to infinite m prime equal to 0 to 1 and n prime equal to 0 to 2. If you expand this, we will get x of 0 comma 0 multiplied with h of 0 comma 0 plus x of 0 comma 1 multiplied with h of 0 comma minus 1 plus x of 0 comma 2 multiplied with h of 0 comma minus 2 plus x of 1 comma 0 multiplied with h of minus 1 comma 0 plus x of 1 comma 1 multiplied with h of minus 1 comma minus 1 plus x of 1 comma 2 multiplied with h of minus 1 comma minus 2. You can see adding these indices see something like 0 plus 0 will get 0 here 0 plus 0 this should be equal to this index here here also you can see 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0 1 minus 1 it is equal to 0 1 minus 1 it is equal to 0 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 which is actually equal to these two indices you can see that from here actually you have m comma n you have m comma n here if i add these two indices m prime plus m minus m prime is equal to m and n prime plus n minus n prime is again back to n so similarly you know after substituting these values so we got uh, 2 into 1 which is equal to 2 for this expression and the all the remaining terms are equal to 0 so all the remaining values also you can compute uh, the we can compute the corresponding values by substituting the terms in the expansion. Let us move to the next method which is graphical convolution. Graphical convolution what we did in one dimensional case we have first folded the signal and then after folding we have shifted the signal then multiplied and added. Shift multiply and add so this is what we did for one dimensional convolution the same thing we are going to do for the two dimensional convolution also except that we have to fold in both the direction as well as we have to we have to shift in both the directions along the rows and the columns so you can see that here how to compute y of 0 comma 0 i will explain x of m prime comma n prime is uh, simply the same as uh, x of m comma n as this is a dummy change of change of dummy variable and h of m prime comma n prime is the same thing of as that of h of m comma n so h of minus m prime comma n prime is equal to you now we are keeping uh, the columns are same and we are uh, so along the rows we are reversing this so this this is actually 1 comma 0 now this will come downwards to become minus 1 comma 0 so h of minus m prime comma n prime is 1 minus 1 1 1 similarly h of minus m prime comma minus n prime is obtained by reversing the columns as well so which is minus 1 1 1 1 now how to obtain y of 0 comma 0 get h of m prime comma n prime h of minus m prime comma minus n prime for each value of m prime comma n prime in this range multiply these two terms and add them up so 
x of m prime comma n prime is this the corresponding values have written uh, below the x of m prime comma n prime this is h of m prime comma n prime multiplying these two will get 2 into 1 which is 2 5 into 0 is 0 3 into 0 is 0 1 into 0 is 0 4 into 0 is 0 1 into 0 is 0 minus 1 into 0 is 0 1 into 0 is 0 1 into 0 is 0 so the sum of the value what we got here is only one non-zero term hence answer for y of 0 comma 0 is how to obtain y of 0 comma 1 y of 0 comma 1 is obtained by first shifting this thing towards this row by 1 that means we are going to shift it towards the columns okay and we are moving with respect to you know along a row column index is going to change so we are shifting it to the columns along the row okay so this is the y of 0 comma 1 i have shifted this by 1 that's right so then after shifting what we need to do multiply and add 5 into 1 5 5 into minus 1 minus 2 and the remaining products are equal to 0 after summing up what i get is 3 next thing next thing is y of 0 comma 2 so y of 0 comma 2 is obtained by again shifting this and multiplying and addition into 1 is 3 minus 1 into 5 is minus 5 so the answer is minus 2 for this y of 0 comma 3 so i am going to shift it by one more term so what i will obtain is minus 1 into 3 is 3 the remaining products are 0 so the summation is minus 3 what happens if i shift it by one more term if i shift it by one more uh, time what is going to happen there is no overlapping region between this and this so the next term will be obviously become 0 so we have completed with one row the 0th row how to obtain the first row so to obtain the first row I have to shift the row as well till now we have shifted with respect to columns only now i am shifting it with respect to row that means i am shifting this upwards after shifting this upward what we need to do again for obtaining y of 1 comma 0 i have shifted this already then multiply and add so 1 into 1 is 1 2 into 1 is 2 so 1 plus 2 we got t next y of 1 comma 1 so shift it along columns again after shifting what we need to do we need to multiply 1 into 4 minus 1 into 1 is 1 5 into 1 is 5 2 into 1 is 2 so the sum of all these terms is 10 for y of 1 comma 2 again shift multiply add got it as 5 so this is how we can compute all the other terms for the next row we have to shift this by upwards one more time and multiply and add them so what we am what we are going to do first we will obtain the zeroth row shifting it on this columns we are going to obtain the zeroth row by shifting uh, this on the columns with respect to you know with respect to columns along this row we are going to shift and after obtaining the zeroth row we are going to shift this upwards and multiply add for obtaining the corresponding terms and then uh, shift along the columns along the row with respect to the columns okay get the next row obtaining the next row we have to shift upwards again and do the convolution so this is what we got y of m comma n we have uh, a uh, 3 by 4 uh, matrix here 3 by 4 matrix here y of m comma n we obtained let us call this as y naught this row as y1 and this row as y2 and this row of x of m comma n we call it as x0 this row of x of m comma n we call it as x1 similarly this as h0 and this as h1 let us examine again this process of graphical convolution so y of m comma n how did we obtain we have uh, computed y0 y1 y2 how did we compute y0 to obtain y0 we have first folded the signal then computed y of 0 comma 0 shifted this shifted this by one unit but uh, you know along the row if i shift if i am shifting it along the row then actually the column index is going to change okay with respect to columns we are actually shifting when we are moving along the row so this sequence is 1 and minus 1 this is being uh, if you see when i am trying to 
obtain y naught these two sequences are getting convolved this is 2 5 3 and 1 minus 1 so y naught is obtained by the convolution of this sequence 1 comma minus 1 which is uh, x naught with the uh, x naught which is 2 5 3 so you can see that here y of 0 comma 0 it started here 1 and minus 1 this is the folded signal of 1 comma minus 1 then we have uh, multiplied and added y of 0 comma 1 it is obtained by shift multiplication and addition and again one more shift multiply add again one more shift multiply add if i am going to do it one more time the element is going to become 0 hence this is convolution of the sequences 2 5 3 and 1 minus 1 of course it is a one dimensional convolution so y naught is obtained by convolution of x naught with h naught so this can be however represented in matrix form y naught will have a 4 by 1 vector x naught is a 3 by 1 vector so the matrix h naught will be a 4 by 3 how to obtain h naught i have already told you it should have four rows so it will have one minus one and then two added padded zeros here one 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 minus one zero zero the next one is downshifted version of this zero one minus one zero and again linearly downshifted version of this 0 0 1 minus 1 so we got h naught do we obtain y naught y naught is equal to h naught into x naught so this is what we got 2 3 minus 2 and minus 3 you can see this is same as this one 2 3 minus 2 and minus 3 and next thing how to obtain y of y1 which is the first row of y of m comma n to obtain this what we did we have a shifted this first upwards we have shifted this h of m comma 1 by 1 units first upwards and then we have started doing the convolution you know multi shifting multiplying and addition shifting multiplying and addition y of 1 comma 0 is obtained by you know involving uh, we can say multiplying this with this and multiplying this with this and adding that up y of 1 comma 1 shift multiply add and again y of 1 comma 2 again shift multiply add y of 1 comma 3 again shift multiply add you see in this process 2 5 3 is getting convolved with 1 1 1 4 1 is getting convolved with 1 minus 1 so y 1 you see it is sum of two one dimensional convolutions which is uh, x naught with h 1 and x 1 with uh, h naught so this can be written as y1 is equal to sum of h0 into x1 which is representing the convolution of uh, x1 with h0 and uh, h1 you know h0 x1 plus h1 x0 so this matrix multiplication is representing the convolution of uh, h1 with x0 so doing this is pretty much similar with uh, what we have seen in the previous case so we can obtain this by no, substituting the corresponding values so we y1 we obtain and y2 is again the convolution of uh, x1 with h1 so y2 can also be obtained the same way uh, this is uh, y0 we got here y1 we got here okay this is supposed to be y2 there's a mistake here this is y2 not y1 so y2 is equal to h1 into x1 let us write this you know in matrix form y naught is equal to h naught into x naught y1 is equal to h1 x naught plus h naught x1 y2 is equal to h1 x1 i am trying to write this in matrix form just like what we have done in one dimensional case Let us, you know treat these things as uh, scalars for some time so y naught y1 y2 i have written this as vector x naught and x1 i have written this as vector what is the quotient of x naught it is h naught what is the quotient of uh, you know I, I will obtain y naught by multiplying this with uh, the first row with uh, this vector h naught into x naught is equal to a, h naught into x naught plus 0 into x1 so y naught is equal to h naught into x naught i have obtained the same thing similarly y1 is equal to h1 into x naught plus h naught into x1 and y2 is equal to 0 into x naught is 0 
plus h1 and x1 is h1 x1. So it is almost same as the one dimensional case, but here the scalar elements are replaced with the vectors and uh, mat the scalar elements in the matrix are uh, replaced with the uh, matrices. So a matrix which is having uh, the elements again as matrices is called as a block matrix. And this thing here, if you see, this is a vector which is again padded with another vector. This is actually the row. It's not as the zeroth row, which is written as a column. X1 is again uh, the zeroth, uh, the first row of X of M comma N written as a column. Okay. So it is the transpose of the row. Transpose of the zeroth row is this. Transpose of the first row is this. And similarly, y naught is the transpose of the zero row of y of m comma one, uh, m comma n. Y one is the transpose of uh, first row of y of m comma n. Y two is the transpose of the second row of y of m comma n. Let us see some basic definitions that are required for us. Definitions are here. Order vector form of a matrix. Let us consider an image. This is the image. This is zero comma zero. 0 comma 1, 0 comma 2, 1 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2. When I try to write this as a matrix, we will write, you know, we have to write, have to rotate this uh, in, in this, uh, this is uh, clockwise direction. This 2, 5, 3 will become uh, the first column, 1, 4, 1 will become the next column. Okay. So, uh, what I mean to say, we will have this M, the vertical axis here, and N as a horizontal axis here. This is, uh, you know, something uh, uh, we are not used to do. This is something which is uh, more mostly uh, very much in sync with the MATLAB notation. Here, you can see when I'm moving in this direction, the row index. Uh, increasing sorry the column index is increasing and when I'm moving in this direction the column index is the row index is increasing so that is the reason uh, you know we have we have to rotate this uh, in order to be in sync with what our notation is when I'm moving in this direction you can see the row index is increasing m is increasing and when I'm moving in this direction column index is increasing okay so this is why we, we had rotated so that uh, we are in sync with our uh, conventional uh, uh, notation ordered vector form you can see that is simply take the first row write it as a column vector next take the second row just write it as a column vector and pad it with the previous uh, column vector that we have and do it till do it for all the rows just write write all the column vectors just write uh, all the rows as column vectors and stack them up one below the other in the same order i mean to say zero row first first row next and then second row and then third row so on till the last row the next definition is uh, a topless block matrix what is a topless block matrix each element of the block matrix is topless then we call that matrix as topless block matrix. I'm repeating in a block matrix, if each element is a topless matrix, then we call that matrix as topless block definition. Next definition is block topless matrix. What is a block topless matrix? If the matrix structure is topless, then we call that as block topless matrix here the matrices need not be topless but the block structure should be the matrix structure should be topless then we call that as block topless matrix what is a doubly block topless matrix when it is both block topless matrix and topless block matrix then we call that as doubly block topless matrix now let us again go back we have y not y1 y2 this obtained by a matrix multiplied with this ordered vector. This is ordered vector form of y of m comma n. 
this is raw ordered vector form of x of m comma n so curvy y this is what i generally call this curvy y is equal to curvy h into curvy x this curvy h is this matrix which is a doubly block topless matrix you can see h naught is a topless matrix itself h1 is a topless matrix itself because both of them are representing two one dimensional lsi systems and this structure is again topless if you can see along the diagonals is having the same elements constant elements that is why this is a doubly block topless matrix a two dimensional system is represented by a doubly block topless matrix whereas a one dimensional lsi system is represented by a topless matrix okay again let me correct a two dimensional lsi system is represented by a doubly block topless matrix now let me put some food to your brain uh can a doubly block topless matrix represent a one dimensional lsi system i'm repeating can a one dimensional lsi system be represented by a doubly block topless matrix okay think about it and let me know take it as an assignment similarly a periodic case linear convolution will be replaced by the circular convolution so the main difference that we observe here is the length the number of rows of uh, y of m comma n will be equal to maximum of the two quantities which are uh, number of rows of x of m comma n and number of rows of h of m comma n in this case both x of m comma n and h of m comma n are having two rows so y of m comma n will have two rows and similarly for number of columns the you know y of m comma n will have number of columns equal to maximum of number of columns of x of m comma n comma number of columns of h of m comma n so here the number of columns of x of m comma n is 3 the number of columns in h of m comma n is 2 so the number of columns in y will be 3 so curvy y is equal to curvy h into curvy x here you can see that this matrix is doubly circular matrix which means that the structure is circular and again each element the matrix which is a circular matrix so curvy y is equal to curvy h into curvy x here curvy h is a doubly circular matrix with this uh, i will complete this session